What's up guys? So I found a solution for the lack of storage in my Tundra. These things have been around for a long time, but I've never owned one. The swing case. I absolutely love this thing. I bought one for the passenger side and I liked it so much after having it for a few days, I went and bought the driver side. So I'm gonna show you how to get that installed and then we'll give you a little bit of an overview on the features of these things, but definitely a good solution for the lack of storage in our Tundras. Let's get the driver side put on the truck and I'll give you a look at the features. So here's everything that comes with it. You have the swing case itself, of course. When you take it out of the box, all of this other stuff is gonna be inside your swing case. So you have your striker bracket, your pivot lock, bag of hardware, your mounting bracket, and then a template. You get instructions as well, obviously keys to lock it. This is lockable. Um, but one thing I wanna mention with your template, this template right here is for your mounting bracket when you go to put it on the truck. Make sure that this is correct size wise. My passenger side was not, it was actually smaller. The holes did not line up properly with the mounting bracket. Best way to tell is just set the, um, the template down, place your mounting bracket over it. And this one is very accurate, holes line up perfectly. But again, my passenger side did not. The top holes were actually too low on the template. And if you look over here, it says that this should be nine and one quarter inch for size reference. On my passenger side one, this was only nine inches. So it was a quarter inch off. And that's how it came from the factory. You don't print this, this comes with your swing case. So just something to keep an eye on, check that to make sure your holes line up. If not, what I did on the passenger side was, I just held this up to the truck and used a Sharpie to mark out my holes and then drill the pilots. All right, so just double check that before you do anything. Only gonna need a couple tools to get this done. So you're gonna need a ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket, or I'm gonna use the 10 millimeter here on my drill. Um, you need a 1 8 inch drill bit for pilot holes, 17 64 inch bit for your main holes, and that's just about it. Um, so very, very simple install. So let's get started. First thing we wanna do is remove your tail light. Very simple, two 10 millimeter bolts, one here, one down there, take those out. Once you have them two removed, you're gonna pull straight back. Don't try to twist it out or anything, you're coming straight back, and I'll show you why. There's a couple pins that hold it in place. First time you do this, they might get a little stubborn, so just kind of get a grip on them somehow, somewhere, and pull straight back to you. So there we go. And then you're gonna have your wiring harness that's gonna be attached in a couple different spots. So first thing I'm gonna do is unplug the wire harness. Once you have the wire harness unplugged here, it's gonna be attached with three different push pins or whatever you wanna call them. I'll take a picture and put it on your screen. There's one up here and then two down the bottom. You can't miss them. You are gonna to have to detach that to, to remove the um, tail light completely from the vehicle. All right, so I got you in closer here so you can see what you have to do. These are the clips I'm talking about, the two lower ones. Basically, the easiest way to do it is get a pair of needle nose pliers and pinch the back of it to close the tabs and then push it through as you're pinching the, the tabs, okay? Very simple to do. Easiest way to do it is pair of needle nose pliers. So that's them two there. And then the other thing too is if you have um, the, the tailgate button function, you will have to unplug that harness as well. It's right here on the side. This last pop clip up here, right here, this brown one, if you come in from underneath it, squeeze the tabs together, and again, push out, it'll pop right off, and now the tail light's free. I'll show you real quick why you wanna pull straight back. So the hole right here and right here lines up with this white peg, goes in the bigger hole, and then this pin, hopefully you can see it right here, goes into that green spot. So as you can see, that's why you wanna pull straight back when you're removing the tail light. All right, next up, we're gonna cut out our template and you wanna cut on the dotted line, not the bracket outline itself. There's a dotted line that goes all the way around it. That's where you wanna cut it out. Here's how you wanna have your template positioned. So you can see the very outer edge of the paper is lined up with the edge of the, the bed. Okay, and then the curves fit it perfectly. You really can't screw it up. Just follow the curves and uh, make sure you're all lined up from top all the way down to the bottom and we're ready to drill our pilot holes. 
All right, so we're gonna take our 1 8 inch bit for the pilot holes. Obviously, you wanna start right in the middle. And a little tip I'll give you, I learned this a, year, a few years ago working on my boat and going through fiberglass. Start in reverse. That way, when you're working on a material like this, if you just start to go in forward, the drill bit might slide around on you a little bit until it kind of bites. If you go in reverse first, it'll give you a nice little divot, and then you'll be able to go into forward, and you won't have the bit sliding around on you. So I'm in reverse. We're just gonna get the hole started. So you can see, going in reverse first, the bit does not slide at all. Hopefully you can see, I might be in the way, but start right in the middle, in reverse. And you can see, it doesn't slide on you. So now that we have all four started, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the template. Put the drill in forward and we'll go straight through. You wanna try not to go farther than an inch in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take my bit and put it deeper in the drill. And that way it'll stop me from going. If you look on the other side, there's really not much you're gonna hit. Um, if you do happen to go in a little bit further than what they call for, um, it's completely empty back here on the other side, but that's what they say in the instructions. So just make sure your drill bit isn't sticking out too far. And you can see when you go in reverse first and you have that little divot, when you're going forward, it just gives you a nice starting point. And again, the bit won't slide around on you. Once your pilot holes are drilled, switch over to your 17 64th inch bit and go through all four. So once you have these four holes drilled, what I would recommend doing, I actually don't have any on hand. I, I might have to pick some up to do this, but you add a little bit of primer and paint inside the holes there, just so you don't have any, any trouble over the years um, with any kind of rusting or anything like that, all right? But then you're gonna get four pieces in your kit that look like this, okay? And this is why you have to remove the tail light. You're gonna come around the back side, take off the covering for the double-sided tape, Make sure the service is clean back in here. I already took an alcohol pad off camera and did that just to save time. And then you're just gonna come through, pop the pegs through, and push to get that double-sided tape to stick for you. I'm just gonna hold it for about 10 seconds or so. Make sure that's stuck on there good. Take another one. Again, remove the, the backing on the double-sided tape. And then get your hand back in here and put it in the lower ones. Here's a little tip when you're going to put the lower pegs in, the bottom two holes. There's a dampening spring right here for our truck bed. It's in your way when the tailgate is down, but when you put the tailgate up, watch what happens. It's gonna come forward and it'll give you much more room to get your hand in there to get the pegs in. So let me close the tailgate and I'll show you. You'll be able to watch right here that spring or the, the dampening piece comes forward and now you, can, you have much more room to get your hand back underneath there. So if you're having trouble getting the bottom, um, pegs in the, the bottom two holes you drilled, close the tailgate and it'll, it'll give you much more room back there to work. Next, you're gonna take your mounting plate, put the flat part on, line up all four holes and push it up against the, the bed there. Take the four supplied nuts and just tighten it down. These are 10 millimeters as well. So I'm just gonna get them started by hand and we'll tighten them down. The, the instructions call for these to be tightened to 90 inch um, pounds of torque. All right, next up is attaching the striker plate. So when you put this on, you, you're working with this gap right here. It's the gap closest to the wheel well. Um, this is what the striker plate looks like. When you put it on, you want the latch closest to the back of the bed. So this is how it's gonna sit. The top, the sides here, rest on these two areas right here. Okay, so when you put it up there, it's gonna sit just like this. All right, and then what you wanna do when I did the passenger side, what worked out best, I came down underneath and the, the bottom tool, two holes here, I got them just about centered in this gap right down here. So that looks good right there. And you do have a little bit of play. This doesn't have to be exact. I'll take a picture when I get this all attached. I'll take a picture and put it on your screen to show you exactly where mine is sitting. But now once you have it in position, we're just gonna take the 1 8 drill bit do the same thing we did up there um, for the mounting plate. I'm gonna go in reverse just to make a little divot in all four mounting locations. Go to the 1764th 
and go straight through and uh, I'll pick up with you there. One thing I'll mention when you're doing these holes back here, you're gonna go through much easier and quicker because of the material. So you can see you go through pretty quick, so don't really push. You know, I'm just kind of using the drill at like a medium speed and just a light pressure. And now we'll switch over to the bigger bit and do our main holes. Once you have all four holes drilled out the size, you're gonna take the remaining two pieces of that look like this. And to get at these ones from the inside, it's easiest if you come up underneath the truck. Unless your arms are super long and skinny, you can go through the tail tail light area. But if not, you can come up and you can see the daylight right up there. So if you get up underneath the truck, you could actually easily reach them um, from up underneath. You'll see the daylight coming through. All right, so you can see we have all four pegs coming through. Take the striker plate, line it up. Get it popped over all four spots. Take the last four nuts, start tightening them down. And again, I'll double check the instruction and put it on your screen, but I believe it calls for 90 inch pound, or I'm sorry, 90 inch, um, 90 inches of torque to tighten these down too as well. All right, let's pop this on the truck, make sure everything fits. So all you're gonna do is take the two spots back here on the swing case and put them over the two pins that are here on the mounting bracket. Pick it up and slide them down over those two pins. And with any luck, we're gonna close it and it's gonna latch. Perfect. Now to release it, all you're gonna do is pull this yellow lever and it'll swing right out. And this thing does swing out pretty far. Obviously you can easily access it without getting up in the truck bed. It comes right out to you. Um, let me show you how to put the pivot lock on and uh, then I'll give you a look at the inside and we'll wrap it up. Okay, so you can see how easily the swing case comes on and off the truck. So if you're worried about bed space, it's that simple to pop this thing on and off the mounting bracket. But let's say you wanna lock it in place, you know, let's say you don't have a bed cover or whatever, um, and you wanna lock this thing in place so you cannot pick it up that easily. That's where the pivot lock comes in. And all you're gonna do is take this piece, you can see on the back, on the back of the lock, it has this silver bar that's going horizontal right now. So all you're gonna do is take the pivot lock and there's an opening on the top and the bottom. So take the top of it, put it on this pin, and then swing it in like that, get into position. And then when you close it, swing it closed like that, the silver tab on the back that's going horizontal is gonna fit in this groove on the mounting bracket. So swing it closed, take your key, and lock it. And that obviously takes that pin, that silver piece on the back and turns it vertical. And now you can't remove the pivot, the pivot lock, which means you also cannot remove the swing case. You can't, you can't pick it up. That's what the pivot lock is for. All right. I'm not sure I'm actually going to use that to be honest, because my my truck bed, I have the electric, the power tracks, um, MR, or I'm sorry, MX cover, the electric cover on here, the tailgate lock. So my bed is pretty secure to begin with. So I'm probably just gonna take the pivot lock off. You don't have to use it. That's, that's its only purpose is to lock it in place so you can't lift it up. So I'm probably gonna remove mine. That way I can very quickly take these swing cases out if I need to, um, but up to you. Not necessary to use, but that's what it does. So as far as features for this thing, we'll start at the outside and work our way in. I'll give you some measurements of the interior, you know, the, uh, the space you have. But starting right here at the lid, first off the construction, it feels like it's an ABS plastic. Feels pretty heavy duty. You know, this thing feels like it's gonna last for sure. Um, the mounting brackets are uh, aluminum, it feels like. So they are not plastic, which is good. That was uh, pretty impressive. But starting up here with the lid, you can see you have this long groove to place things. If you're working at the back of the truck, you wanna place something in this, this big area back here, you know, players or whatever, um, whatever the case may be. You have a couple cutouts, one here and one here. Looks like if you wanna put a drink there, you know, uh, again, if you're working at the back of the truck, it does lock, of course. They send you two keys. Um, the keys work, the same key that works for the pivot lock is obviously the same key for right here. Um, again, I'm probably not going to lock mine just because my bed is so secure, but you can lock it if you so choose. Now, it does come with a cover to cover the lock to keep, you know, rain and stuff out of there, so that's good. You open it up, and one of the things I absolutely love, even though I do have a cover on here, is if you look at how this comes down over the case itself, there's a lip. This thing is, 
I wouldn't be surprised if this is 100% watertight because of the way the lid comes down over the sides of the case, but also it has a gasket going all the way around. So, you know, I'm just getting this thing on here. I can't say for sure, but it wouldn't surprise me if this is 100% waterproof. Um, you know, if I have any issues with that, I'll let you guys know. But when you open it up, you can see you have, try to get a position here and I'll put a couple pictures on the screen as we're going but you can see you have a huge open space in here and just measurement wise if you're looking for rough estimate depth we have 13 inches deep by let's go across we have about eight and a quarter across and then the length all the way down at the bottom before it starts bending to go over the wheel well I know you can't see it on camera, but it's 15 and a half inches um, going across the bottom that you have a flat surface of before it starts that bend to go over the wheel well. So eight and a quarter, 15 and a half, and 13 deep. Pretty good space there. Um, I'm gonna keep straps and stuff like that, maybe even a, a, a jump pack in here, something like that. You come to the front, and it has this tray up here that is removable. Um, you know just smaller items you can put on there if you want to remove it there's extra there's extra storage underneath there just another smaller compartment and real quick we'll get some measurements there for you so the depth on the smallest compartment in the front at its shallowest is about four and three quarter inches deep the length is approximately eight inches from side to side and then it's going to be eight and a quarter going across as well just like back there so there you have the measurements of that area there tray just sits right on top of it all right so definitely love this thing i'm telling you I'm, I'm not sure why i never looked at these i consider them in the past but i never really looked at them the other thing i want to mention which i was a little bit worried about you've probably noticed throughout the video i have red bed tie downs here I do, I'm gonna have, if, the, if it's not posted when I post this video, it will be posted very shortly after. But these bed tie downs are made from Keith at Charvonia Designs. We had blue on the last truck. I love these things. He makes them for the, um, the bed rail system as well. But I have four of them on the bed here. Not only do they look a million times better than our factory bed tie downs, they, they have a couple functional advantages. So make sure you check out the video on these that I have, that I have here on the channel. And uh, I'll put, maybe I'll put a link down below to that video, but they do have some functional advantages, but they look so much better than the stock tow hooks. And I also have a discount code for my viewers. Um, if you want to pick up some of these, grab a set and save a few bucks. So, all right, so there's the swing case in a nutshell. All right, guys, there you have it. That easy to get the swing cases installed on our 22 Tundras. Still works with the uh, tonneau cover, closes no problem. You still have access to the bed rail systems. I can't think of a con with these swing cases. I wish I got them sooner. I actually wish I had them on my last truck now. Check them out. I got mine off Amazon. I'm not sponsored. I paid out of pocket for these just like anybody else. Um, I don't have any discount codes, unfortunately, unfortunately for you, but I did get mine on sale on Amazon, which was the cheapest that I saw them anywhere. Um, even with discount codes on other websites, Amazon was the best price that I found. So I will put links down below, keep an eye on it. The, the prices do fluctuate. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Again, I mean, if you're, if you're worried about the lack of storage in this truck, these things solve that issue. And I love the fact that they pop off so easily if you, if you need access to the whole bed. Um, they come off in seconds, as you saw. So if you have any questions, let me know. So in, install is straightforward. I, anybody could do this install. It's super easy to do. And these things are well worth it. So if you have any questions, let me know. Put them down below. I'll get them addressed for you. And as always, I appreciate, appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you on the next video. Take care.